I bought and tested these six best 10 person tents and I'm gonna share everything I know with you right now. For ease of use, I looked at how easily I could set up as well as take down and pack up all these 10 person tents. When I set up each 10 person tent with my brother, here's how long each tent took us to set up, including staking and guying out the tents. The two fastest 10 person tents were the Outdoor Products Instant Tent and the Coleman Instant Cabin Tent. They were both super user friendly, especially the Outdoor Products Tent. The Coleman Instant Tent took slightly longer to set up mainly because of this extra step of installing these green colored fiberglass poles for the hinged D door which takes about 1 minute for 2 people. Of the four non-instant tents, I found the Weathermaster 10-person tent to be the easiest to set up, mainly because there are only three roof poles to insert into these short and pretty much snag-free pole sleeves. There are six of these straight poles for the walls, which is the same as all the other tents. There are three fiberglass poles, two for the angled windows that you need to set up, and one for the hinged D-door. The next easiest tent to set up is the Ozark Trail 10-person tent, which also has three roof poles, but the pole sleeves are a lot longer, and also the roof poles are not color-coded. Like all the other tents, there are six of these steel poles for the walls. To stake and guy out the tent, there are 14 of these steel stakes. The core 10-person straight wall cabin tent has almost the exact same design and setup as the Ozark Trail tent, with three color-coded roof poles and six wall poles. It took slightly longer to set up because it has six extra stakes for the ground vents and doors, so 20 stakes in total. Lastly, we have the Columbia Mammoth Creek 10 person tent with not three, but six roof poles, two additional pole clips, 10 guy lines, and two angled windows, which you must set up from the inside of the tent. I also tried my best to set each 10 person tent up on my own, and here are the timings. The one person setup timing is roughly double the time of the two person timing, give or take. But here are a few things to take note of. I'm about 5 foot 3, so because of the high peak heights of these tents, I could not put the rain fly on for the Ozark Core and Outdoor Products 10 person tents. Also, for the Ozark Core and Columbia 10 person tents, these tents come with these elbow or pole connectors, which I felt was a humongous pain to set up by myself. Because the roof of these tents are supposed to be propped up, it's very difficult to get the poles to arch the correct way. Not impossible because I've done it, but difficult. If the poles arch the wrong way, you'll get an inverted roof like this, which is super annoying. So I highly recommend getting someone else to go inside the tent to set it up much more easily and also so you won't put too much stress on the fiberglass poles. For the Columbia 10 person tent, I couldn't even get the blue fiberglass roof poles into these pole connectors on my own and almost broke my pole trying to. The bottom line is that the only two tents that I could put up on my own is the Coleman Instant 10 person cabin tent and the Coleman Weathermaster 10 person tent. If you're a bit taller than me, the Outdoor Products 10 person instant cabin tent will be a breeze to put up as well. For ease of takedown, here are the timings starting from the fastest to take down and pack up. I put an asterisk for the Coleman Instant Cabin tent because it's an estimated timing. I did take down the entire tent, but I did not pack it up into the carry bag because there was a manufacturing defect and it couldn't fit back in. But my Outdoor Products 10 person tent fit back in really easily and is exactly the same size, plus this Coleman carry bag can be expanded by ripping this off. When I sent the Coleman tent back to Amazon, it wasn't that difficult to fit everything back in, but I forgot to time it. Also, the Coleman Weathermaster 10 person tent took slightly longer than I expected because it was quite a tight fit to stuff everything back into the carry bag. It was a much tighter fit than the rest of my 10 person non instant tents. One last thing for this section all these timings are based on me having set up and taken down each tent at least half a dozen times. So, for ease of use, here's how I rated each 10 person tent. For spaciousness, I looked at the peak height, slope of the walls, and the base area. Here's the peak height of each tent from the highest to lowest. If you were wondering why I could attach the rain flag of the Coleman 10 person instant cabin tent on my own without any help, it's because the Coleman has a much lower peak height than the rest. For my height of 5 foot 3 to reach the loop at the very top of the tent, the highest peak height that I could reach was the Weathermaster tent with 80 and a half inches. Even so, I had to really stretch my arm out and stand on tiptoes at the same time. I couldn't reach the top for the core and Ozark Trail 10 person tents. 
five out of six of these 10 person tents are cabin tents with almost vertical sidewalls with two exceptions. First, the Weathermaster 10 person tent is in a cabin tent and it has this small triangular space here and here's what it looks like from the inside. That's also why I could set up the rain fly of the Weathermaster 10 person tent on my own without any help. But excluding the small triangular space, the lowest height in the tent, which is about here at the corners of the tent, is about 58 inches. Second, even though the Coleman 10 person instant tent is supposed to be a cabin tent, I felt like there weren't enough pole clips in this tent and the tent body felt a bit droopy, especially on this side of the tent. Also, the side walls aren't as vertical as I expected them to be. This reduces livable space a little bit for sure. The lowest height in the tent, also at the four corners, is about 59 inches. The lowest height in the rest of the tents are a few inches higher. I took the floor or base area measurements, both length and width in feet, as well as the base area in square feet. There's not a lot of difference in the base area of all six tents, but here are a few things to take note of. Apart from the Weathermaster 10 person tent, the rest of the 10 person tents all had marketed dimensions of 14 by 10 feet, but the measurements that I took were slightly smaller for all the tents. These five tents also have a rectangular base area and only the Weathermaster 10 person tent does not. So that's why the maximum number of queen-sized camping mattresses I could fit into this Weathermaster 10 person tent was only three. The mattresses that I used in this video are slightly smaller but almost queen size. Apart from these three mattresses though, there's quite a bit of space left over for camping gear. As for the other 10 person tents with rectangular floor space, they could all fit four queen size mattresses. However, the problem here is that there's hardly any space left over for camping gear as you can see here. If you're wondering, every single one of these tents can accommodate 10 single sleeping pads or sleeping bags, but that means you've got to sleep practically shoulder to shoulder. Plus, you'd have a tiny bit of space for camping gear, especially in the Weathermaster tent because it has the biggest base area. Also, none of these tents have vestibules, so if you leave your shoes out, it will get wet if it rains. So for spaciousness, here's how I rated each 10 person tent. For comfort and features, I'm going to focus on the doors, room divider, storage options, and dark room technology. Here's the number of doors that each 10 person tent has from the most to the least. Most of the doors are anywhere between 58 to 65 inches from the floor to the top of the door, so even at my height, I do need to duck a little to get through all the doors. Take note that the hinged D-door of the Coleman 10 person instant tent is only about 47 inches from the ground to the top of the door so I had to duck even more. The Outdoor Products 10 person tent has three doors. One is this huge T-door and to the left and right of this T-door we have the other two smaller side doors. The Weathermaster 10 person tent has two doors, one at each length of the tent. The front door is this super user friendly hinged D-door, the back door is not hinged so you do have to zip it open and close. The Coleman 10 person instant tent also has two doors, one at each width of the tent. The door on the left width is this hinged D door and the other is not hinged. The Columbia 10 person tent has one humongous T door and right beside it we have this smaller side door. The core 10 person tent has two identical D shaped doors, one at the front length and the other at the back length of the tent. And lastly, the Ozark Trail 10 person tent has only one D shaped door. All of these 10 person tents come with room dividers but the best one goes to the Columbia tent which is pre-attached and cannot be removed though you can pull back the sides of the divider if you don't want to use it. What I really like about this pre-attached divider is that it's completely full length so there are no gaps at the top, bottom, or sides and it's also not very see-through. My only issue is that both doors are on the same side of the divider. The room divider of the outdoor products tent is quite similar to the Columbia's except for the color. As for the rest of the tents, I'm not really a big fan of the room dividers. Let me show you why. The removable room divider of the Weathermaster tent has some pretty big gaps at the sides, top, and bottom of the divider. The room divider of the Coleman instant tent also has big gaps at the sides and you can actually see quite a bit through it. Same with the core tent divider where you can see almost the entire room through the divider and the Ozark Trail room divider has huge gaps at the sides, top and bottom, plus there's no zip down the middle for easy access. Here's a quick summary of the storage options in each 10 person tent from the most to the least. The Outdoor Products 10 person tent has only two pockets but they are the biggest of all these 10 person tents and it has four lantern loops. The Weathermaster 10 person tent has four pockets and one lantern loop. The core 10 person tent has only two pockets but it comes with a small gear loft as well. You can use the divider at the same time and there's one lantern loop too. The Ozark Trail 10 person tent also has two pockets, a gear loft and one lantern loop. 
The Columbia 10-person tent has only two pockets and two lantern loops. And lastly, the Coleman 10-person instant tent has two tiny pockets and one lantern loop. As for the dark room features, special mention has to go to the Coleman 10-person instant tent, which is the only tent with this feature. I'll explain more about this later. For now, here's how I rated each tent based on its comfort and features. For ventilation, I looked at the ceiling mesh, vents, windows, and rainy day options. All of the 10-person tents in this review have a lot of ceiling mesh, so on a hot day you can take the rain fly off from the outside for more ventilation. You can also watch the sunset from inside your tent and stargaze at night if it's not raining. Here's the number of vents that I found in each tent. All of these are ground vents. Although the Outdoor Products 10-person tent has only one vent, it's extra large and measures about 59 inches in length and 11 inches in width. The core 10-person tent is the only tent with two vents, both measuring about 32 by 9 inches. And lastly, the Columbia 10-person tent has one ground vent, measuring 40 by 12 inches. The rest of the tents don't have any vents at all. Here's the number of windows that can be opened from the inside for more ventilation if it's not raining. This also includes the mesh from the doors. So after opening all the doors in the window mesh, I measured the longest length and longest width of each one of them and calculated the amount of ventilation in square inches. The Coleman 10-person instant tent has the most ventilation when it's not raining with a whopping 5 windows and 2 doors, almost all of them are massive and it has an incredible 9400 square inches of ventilation. Next up we have the Columbia 10-person tent with 4 windows and 3 door mesh panels for a total 7800 square inches of ventilation. Tied for 3rd place we have both the Outdoor Products 10-person tent and the Core 10-person tent, both with about 5900 square inches of ventilation. The Outdoor Products tent has 3 smaller windows on this side of the tent, plus 4 mesh panels from the 3 doors which are pretty big. The core tent has 4 windows plus 2 doors, so 6 mesh panels in total. And lastly, in 4th place, we have both the Weathermaster 10-person tent and the Ozark Trail 10-person tent, both with about 5,500 square inches of ventilation. The Weathermaster tent has 4 windows and 2 door mesh panels. 4 of them are not very big, but the 2 angled windows are pretty big. The Ozark Trail tent has 5 identical windows and 1 door. The problem with these windows is that most of them cannot be opened when it's raining out. All six of these 10-person tents have rain flies that provide only partial coverage, so as you can see here, quite a bit of rain gets onto the mesh of the windows and doors and will drip right into your tent if you don't close them. So when it's raining, the Columbia 10-person tent actually has the most ventilation. Not only does it have one ground vent, it also has two pretty large call-out windows, which I was able to leave open not only in light rain, but in moderate to heavy rain as well. Next up, we have the Weathermaster 10-person tent with two angled windows that are slightly larger than the Columbia's, but with no vents. I was able to leave these windows open in moderate to heavy rain as well. Although the rest of the tents don't have these cool angled window features, the Outdoor Products 10-person tent still has some ventilation from its extra large vent, and so does the Core 10-person tent with its two ground vents. The only two tents with hardly any ventilation at all is the Coleman 10-person instant tent and the Ozark Trail 10-person tent. They have no angled windows, no vents, and the only ventilation that I got was through the gap between the ceiling mesh and the rain fly. Here's how I rated each 10-person tent for ventilation. For weather protection, I looked at rain and wind. I rain tested each of these 10-person tents by putting it through at least one hour of rainfall. It did not rain while I was using some of these tents, so I made my own rain with this water hose. The best tent I have against rain is the Columbia 10-person tent. After an hour of moderate to heavy rain, I noticed no leaks at all and all the fabric was still bone dry. But after an entire night of raining, I noticed some leaking through the corners the next morning. I used a water hose with the Outdoor Products 10-person tent and noticed some leaking through this untaped seam here after 15 minutes of pretty heavy rain. After the one hour rain test though, apart from the seam leaking, none of the tent body or bathtub flooring was wet. I did the same with the core 10-person tent and noticed leaking through one of the zips at about 15 to 30 minutes in. After about 55 minutes of pretty heavy rainfall, this untaped seam here also started leaking and the orange fabric near the ground vent felt a bit damp. For the Weathermaster 10-person tent, after about 15 minutes of pretty heavy rain, I noticed water started leaking into the tent through this inverted but untaped seam. Also, after the one hour rain test, the darker brown fabric was slightly damp. 
There was quite a few hours of light rain when I was using the Coleman 10% Instant Tint, and after about 15 to 30 minutes, I noticed that water started seeping in through this inverted but untaped seam, and also the zip and zippers of the hinged D door also started leaking. And my least water resistant tint was the Ozark Trail 10% tint, because after just 15 minutes of mostly light rain and some moderate rainfall, I started to see some leaking through this seam, which is not taped. Also, I noticed that some water was already seeping through this blue fabric. In light rainfall, the Columbia Outdoor Products and Core 10% tints did well, with no leaking seams or wet fabric. The Weathermaster and Coleman Instant 10% tints had a tiny bit of leaking through the untaped seam, but the fabric was dry. For more info, you can check out the full rain test videos on my channel. I did not test for wind protection, but I did notice a few things. Because most of these tents are cabin-shaped tents, if you don't stake them down, they don't stand a chance even against light wind. If you stake them down, they'll do okay in light wind. For stronger winds, those with more guy lines, like the Columbia tent with the most number of guy lines, which is 10, and those with more aerodynamic shapes, like the Weathermaster tent, will do slightly better. However, even for my Columbia tent, after a very stormy night, I noticed that one of the fiberglass poles for the roof bent, though not permanently. Thankfully, I was able to pull it back into shape. Basically, bottom line is that if you're expecting very strong winds, I wouldn't recommend any of these tents because they all have vertical sidewalls that can pick up a lot of wind plus high peak heights. Based on rain protection only, here's how I rated each tent. For quality, I looked at the flooring, tent body, stitching, zippers, and more. Let's go through the quality of each tent starting from the best. The Columbia 10% tent body is made of 75D polyester and the flooring is made of 150D polyester, which is much less crunchy and feels higher quality than my other tents. The stitching all around the tent is good, the zippers are SBS with no snagging issues, and the mesh is no seam, smooth and silky. And the Columbia is my only tent that had all its seams taped. The Outdoor Products 10% tent has polyethylene flooring, while the main tent body and rainfly are made of 68D polyester. The stitching is good and the mesh is no seam and silky, but the zippers do snag on side doors because of the rain cover. The Weathermaster 10% tent also has polyethylene flooring. The main tent body is also made of 68D polyester, but the rainfly is made of 75D polyester taffeta. All the seams are inverted, the stitching is good, the mesh is good quality but not no and the zippers were pretty good quality as well, except for the occasional snag from the outside when using the back door that doesn't have the hinged feature. The flooring of the core 10% tent is made of polyethylene, and the tent body is made of 68D polyester. The stitching was fine though, I found a few loose threads, and the zippers were also okay except for the snagging on the door. It was a bit more snaggy than the Weathermaster tent. Also, my zip on one of the doors leaked during the rain, but the other one was fine. I had no issues with the Coleman Instant Tent's polyethylene flooring and polyester tent body, and the stitching was fine. What I did not like though was, first, some of the seam tape wasn't very well applied around the window, so it blocks the zipper and makes it more snaggy. Also, I found a couple of small holes in the mesh. And lastly, my tent came with a defective pole that was attached the wrong way, but I guess manufacturing defects do happen. The flooring of the Ozark Trail 10% tent feels like your regular polyethylene flooring, while the tent and rainfly is made of 68D coated polyester. But when I run my hand over the tent fabric, it feels a bit sticky. There were also loose threads all over the tent and fairly big holes where the guy lines are connected to the main tent body. My door zipper kept snagging from the outside every single time I opened the door. There was this sort of inconsistent mesh in two places, and I found some rust on the steel wall poles. Also, right out of the box, I noticed some black stuff on my hands after touching the tent. So here's how I rated all the tents based on quality. For portability, I looked at the weight of each 10-person tent as well as the packed sizes with a 2-person Coleman Sundome tent and a 32-ounce Nalgene bottle for a size comparison. 10-person instant tents are about 50 inches long while regular tents are about 30 inches long so instant tents are about 40% bigger. And finally, here are the overall results. I color-coded the ratings, green is for good, yellow is for not so good, and red is for pretty bad. Based on this weightage, here's the overall score for each 10-person tent. I spent over $1,500 buying these six 10-person tents, six weeks testing them out, and another two months after that putting this series together. So if this video has been helpful, please help me hit that like button. Thank you, and I really appreciate it.
Now before you buy any of these, let me talk about my recommendations. While I really enjoy using all the tents, my top pick has to go to the Coleman Weathermaster 10 person tent. I've had the Weathermaster for almost three years now, and it was this tent that inspired this review. For my top pick, I looked not only at the overall score, but at the price I paid for the tent. The Weathermaster tent scored almost as well as the more expensive tents, yet cost me a whopping 40% less, which is why it's also my best value for money pick. There are many things that I love about this Weathermaster tent, but I think the three main things I love about it are first, the hinged door is super user-friendly with a handle on both the outside and inside. Second, the angled windows seem like such a premium feature and it's not very common to be able to keep windows open in the rain. Third, my Weathermaster tent has actually been pretty durable. I've used this for backyard camping over the past three years or so and it's still holding up great with just a few minor flaws. I noticed that some of the steel poles, the ones with this silver button here, became a bit stiff to put together. And also the fiberglass pole for the curved part of the hinged D door is quite thin and mine cracked off her wall. But I just quickly taped it together using duct tape and it still works fine. Overall these minor flaws aside, I certainly got my money's worth out of this tent which is why I love it so much. If you can afford to shell out a bit more for a 10 person tent, I'd highly recommend the Columbia Mammoth Creek 10 person tent, which is my best premium tent pick. I paid quite a bit more for this than I did for my Weathermaster and it trumps all the other tents in so many ways. This Columbia tent did the best in the rain test and water only started leaking in through the corners after many, many hours of rain. Plus it has the most ventilation when it's raining and is my only tent that came with all its seams taped. This Columbia T-door is the biggest door of any of my 10 person tents. The divider is full length with no gaps and to top it all off, the quality is superb from the crunch free polyester flooring to the super smooth SBS zippers. I think its only main con is that it takes a few minutes longer than the rest of the tents to set up. But once you're done setting it up, you'll find that it's well worth the effort. My two instant tents are the outdoor products and the Coleman instant cabin tents. I feel that the outdoor products instant mechanism is slightly better for two reasons. First, for the Coleman Instant Tent, sometimes one of the black elbow joints of the poles would jam and won't prop up properly and I'd have to fold it back up and try to prop it back up again. I did not have the same issue with my higher quality Outdoor Products Tent. Now second, and here's the more important difference, the Outdoor Products Instant Tent has three hubs while the Coleman has only one center hub. This makes walls of the Coleman Instant Tent a lot droopier which eats into your livable space inside the tent. That's why if you're looking for the best possible 10 person instant tent mechanism, the Outdoor Products is better than the Coleman's. Plus the Outdoor Products instant tent has more livable space, one extra door, a better room divider, bigger storage pockets, and is higher quality. But it's also a bit pricier. If the Outdoor Products Instant Tent is out of your budget, then you might want to consider the Coleman Instant Tent. It still sets up much faster than regular traditional tents, and it has two amazing features that the Outdoor Products Tent does not. First, this amazing hinged door that makes going in and out of the tent a breeze, and second, it has one of the best dark room features that I've ever seen so far. This is what the Coleman tent looks like when all the windows are open. Now let me close all the windows and doors and show you what it looks like. There's only a little bit of light seeping in through the gap between the roof and the rain fly, and also from the bathtub flooring at the bottom of the tent. It's perfect for sleeping in really. And if you're the type that doesn't like a single spot of light when you're sleeping at night, check out how dark this tent is at night. It's seriously quite amazing. It's almost pitch black even though there are still street lights from the outside. The dark room feature also makes the Coleman tent quite a bit cooler inside the tent during the day compared to my other tents in this review. It also has the most windows and most ventilation during hot days which makes it the perfect choice for sunny days in the summer. The Coleman 10 person instant tent's biggest downside has to be that it has the lowest peak height of all these 10 person tents and it has the least vertical sidewalls and therefore the least livable space. But as long as you're not trying to pack 10 people into this tent, I think you're good to go. The core 10 person tent came in average or a little better than average in most categories, but where it stands out is in spaciousness. It has the highest and most impressive peak height of 90 inches, which is great especially for taller people. If you're not as tall though, like me, you'd have trouble reaching the gear loft and the lantern loop at the top. With its near vertical sidewalls, this is easily the tent with the most vertical space for sure. It also comes in a very nice color, not only in the day but at night too. The core tent is also great 
in light rain and went through one hour of light rain with no leaks at all. If you're on a tight budget and can't afford to shell out more than 100 bucks on a 10 person tent, the Ozark Trail tent is worth checking out. I think some Ozark Trail 10 person tents come in at under 100 bucks, but do take note of a few things. The quality of Ozark Trail tents aren't the best and this Ozark Trail tent was no different with slightly sticky walls, loose threads, mesh runs and door snagging. It also offers the least protection against rain and only has a single door. But other than that, you can certainly use it on sunny days and it's super spacious for sure. You definitely can't get any other tent at this price. Please help me smash that like button if this was useful and if you do decide to buy a tent I recommend, it would mean a lot if you could use my affiliate links in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.